Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is the bodies of water of the world. Fascinating topic. You know, you think it's a bore fest. No, actually, this is a, an important part of history. Is, is, this, is, this would be in geography. And, you know, it's, it's nice to have a world map, if you're really into history, and put it up on the wall of your home. And, and then as you're reading, you know, studying, you come across different things from geography or, in this case, bodies of water. And the point, it's, it's, it's good to know where things are in relation to other things. So, and uh, this, so we're going to talk today about the oceans, the seas, the uh, lakes, and, uh, and bodies of water, various, various sizes. And, of course, everyone loves the ocean. You, know, you go to the ocean and the beach and you have the, the water. People, we, we love the water and the, uh, you know, the waves and so forth and the horizon. Right? And all that expanse, you know, the, the space that you have when you, when you are at a body of water. And now in today's world, we have a lot of, you know, mostly air travel or driving on land. And so you know, people aren't traveling except for cruise ships on bodies of water. As much, not as much transportation by, uh, by ships, so we don't think of them as much, kind of like rivers, because of the modern world, but they're still very, very important, and an important part of history and today's world. So we're going to start uh, from, from large to small, starting with the, the largest by far body of water in the world, the Pacific Ocean. Huge. It's, uh, it's uh, almost like half the world, or half going around the world. An enormous body of water. Between, uh, on the west, you have Asia, right? And then the east would be North and South America. The Pacific Ocean. Supposedly, when, uh, uh, you know, the, the first uh, voyage around the world, when the Europeans were trying to, trying to prove the world was round, that you could go all the way around the world by going west. And so this, this, this voyage by Magellan, right? Ferdinand Magellan, and, and um, of course, he, he didn't make it. He, he died in the Philippines, but uh, his voyage did make it. I think they had like 300 guys, and only uh, maybe 30 made it all the way back to Portugal. Anyway, when uh, supposedly when the... Uh, now, the thing is, when, what they did is they went around South America, and uh, you know the, they started in the Atlantic Ocean, went down south, and went around South America. And that's where... That's Cape Horn, or Tierra del Fuego, and it's where the two oceans come together. Not a, not a big uh, area between the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. And they have Antarctica to the south. And since it's not a big area, and there's always supposedly high winds there, very stormy weather, very dangerous to, to make that cro- crossing. And uh, when uh, Magellan's uh, made it to past the uh, Cape Horn and into the Pacific, uh, and there was, it was a, they had calm weather. And, they, and so they supposedly named the, that, the ocean the Pacific. Oh, peaceful. Pacific means, you know, pa- like pacify, peaceful. They, oh, look at the peaceful ocean. And it really isn't. It's a, such a huge... Um, uh, amount of water. That's apparently how the name came from, because after that storm, tough crossing of Cape Horn, and it reminds me of uh, actually the book uh, Mutiny on the Bounty and the, the two mo- the book and the two movies when uh, when the when the uh, late 1700s when the British uh, ship the Bounty was traveling from England to Tahiti to get breadfruit for 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 slaves in the Caribbean, um, and they're going around Cape Horn and this well, Captain Bly was a tough guy and they were having tough going around the. They were going around the horn in this stormy weather in this scene where Captain Bly says to Fletcher Christian, the first mate, so are you afraid, you afraid to go around the horn, Mr. Christian? <laughs> Making fun of him. <laughs> and of course that led to the mutiny later. So anyway, yeah, Cape Horn. So anyway, so uh, the Pacific Ocean, let's see what else can we say about it? Um, um, I'm drawing a blank here. It's, it's yeah, this vast area. Uh, oh, okay. Now, uh, the, 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 the Pacific Islands can really, you know, there are a lot of islands, can be classifi- classified into three categories. Polynesia, uh, which is from New Zealand to, to Hawaii to Easter Island, a vast amount of water. And, uh, and uh, this is called Polynesian, because poly means many, and there, these are many, many islands, huge amount, a huge area and, and uh, islands scattered. Now, then there's Micronesia. To the east of the Philippines, micro means small. See, these are small islands, east of the Philippines, and Guam is the largest and the most populated and, and prosperous materially. And then the others like Chuuk and uh, Saipan and so forth and uh, the Marshall Islands. And then the third area would be the Melanesia, uh, east of New Guinea, including the Solomon Islands and Fiji and New Caledonia. And Mela means dark, and it's because supposedly the people... The, the people in that region have dark, have dark skin, so Melanesia. So those are the three, the three, uh, uh, you could say, uh, groupings, not necessarily archipelagos, in the Pacific Ocean.
Okay, anything else we can say about... Okay, so that's that's the Pacific, and of course, uh, yeah, huge area, and, uh, and very important. Okay, now the second body of water would be the Atlantic Ocean, which is actually about a third of the size of, of the Pacific. And it's between North and South America uh, to the West, and then Europe and, and uh, Africa to the East. And the Atlantic is supposedly is named after Atlantis, this lost uh, uh, continent from the Atlantic Ocean from the last high age, of which the ancient Greeks were a remnant and proof that there was a last high age because the ancient Greeks were so talented. So the Atlantic Ocean, you know, there's been a lot of travel between. This is when where Columbus made the famous uh, voyage of they called discovery. It wasn't really discovery, but for, for Europeans uh, learning that there are, oh, there, wow, there's a continent here we didn't even know about. So the North and South America in 1492. So that was a major thing when he traveled from, from Spain to actually made landfall in the Bahamas. And then, you know, these took a lot of people who traveled to Europe from America. It's the old country. You know, they call it the pond. They call the Atlantic crossing the pond. Kind of making a joke because the pond is a very small body of water. So the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, not, not, not too many islands. We, we'll talk later. Well, the Caribbean Sea is a little bit different. But then yeah, there's um, St. Helena Island where Napoleon Bonaparte died in the Atlantic, not too far from the coast of Africa, uh, south of the equator. I think somewhat t- tropical area. So the Atlantic Ocean between, and you go north, you can get into the Arctic and south. Going south is going to Antarctica. Okay, so the Atlantic Ocean. Now the third, uh, third, third largest in size would be the Indian Ocean between Africa uh, and Australia and south of India. So this is much considerably smaller and obviously an important body of water for travel, water travel between Europe and Asia, the Indian Ocean. You know, named after India, sort of a very spiritual country. Now, the uh, another uh, body of water, ocean, would be the Arctic, the Arctic Ocean on the top of the world, which is like a frozen ocean, not too big. And uh, well, with global warming nowadays, you know, there it's it's more. I think it's more and more uh, ice-free in summer. And they have you know submarine. You can take a submarine in uh, in the uh, Arctic. I had a friend. I met a, classmate who was in the U.S. Navy. I said, have you ever been in the Arctic Ocean? And he said, he said I can neither confirm or deny whether I've been in the Arctic. Of course, I thought he's trying, he's trying to be cool, which he actually had been. Uh, he had been in the Arctic, I'm pretty sure, in, the, in a submarine. And of course, there's been, yeah, the, the Russians are on one side, the, Canada's on the other side, but the U.S. is going all over the world in the military. And, uh, and so I imagine these American and Russian submarines in the Cold War, you know, were kind of eyeing each other in the Arctic Ocean. So you can't really, you can't, well, and when it's frozen, you can go to the North Pole, but it's actually part of, you know, they talk about, oh, Santa Claus lives on the North Pole. How's he going to do that? It's the Arctic Ocean. And, uh, but it's just a nice story for children. And you could be there in summer, but I, I'm pretty sure it's a it, 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 good thing to learn about. Does it, how much does it thaw in in uh, in summer, you know, when it's warmer. Okay. Then there's the, the 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 Great Southern Ocean, which is like a ring around Antarctica, which would be uh, southern parts of the Pacific, the Atlantic, and the Indian Ocean. Southern Ocean, just interesting, a ring going all the way way down south. Yeah. So so the, the Southern Ocean. So that does it for the oceans. You basically we have one, two, three, five oceans. Now we're going to get into the seas, and uh, a sea is basically like a salty as well. But, but smaller, and the, by far the largest sea, I believe, is the Mediterranean, a very, very famous Mediterranean Sea, uh, on the, and the north, of, north of which is Europe, and south is Africa. And, of course, there are the famous, uh, you know, some very wealthy places, and, you know, glamorous vacation spots in southern France, Monaco, and so forth. There's Monte Carlo, where these, uh, you know, French Riviera on the Mediterranean Sea. And Spain, there's the Spanish coast as well. Of course, Italy is all in the Mediterranean. And, uh, and nowadays, since North African countries have been troubled, a lot of, a lot of refugees have been traveling across uh, Mediterranean to Europe because Algeria has sort of fallen into dis, uh, disorder after the fall of M- the dictator of Muammar Gaddafi in Libya and so forth. And then, uh, so the Mediterranean Sea, yeah, which is ancient, you know, has a lot of ancient... Uh, Connotations from the Roman Empire and the ancient Greeks. So the Mediterranean Sea, very, very important body of water. Uh, now, if we're going to, other, now, smaller uh, in Europe, talk about Europe, the, you have the North Sea between uh, Great Britain and, and Holland and uh, kind of a small body of water. The, uh, the Baltic Sea, which has these, uh, 
uh, well, former Soviet Union countries, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. I have a good friend from Latvia. Uh, the Baltic states. And uh, actually, years ago, you know, when centuries ago, when Russia was landlocked, uh, that was one of the things that Peter the Great, the great one of the, one of the great czars, great leaders of Russia, you know, he expanded. He wanted access to the ocean because he actually loved the oceans. And he was able to, to, uh, to establish Russian, uh, uh, or expand Russia to the Baltic and establish the city, build a city named after himself, St. Petersburg, later Leningrad. Now it's back to St. Petersburg again. For a while, it was called Petrograd. And uh, so, so the Russians were able to get on the, on the Baltic Sea. Yeah, and uh, so that, that was very important. For, so a window to the west, so they could trade with Europe. And then north of that is the Gulf of Bothnia between, uh, Sweden, and, uh, between Sweden and Finland. Now, uh, in, the, uh, in the Atlantic part of the Mediterranean, you have the, the Adriatic Sea, which is west of the Balkan Peninsula, east of Italy. Adriatic Sea also has some real nice places there for people to go on vacation tourists. The Aegean Sea, which is, this is getting into the eastern part of the Mediterranean. The Greek islands. Yeah, all this wonderful ancient history of the ancient Greeks, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Democracy in the Olympics and these tremendous ancient Greek uh, people who are so talented. So the Aegean Sea. Now the Black Sea, which is, if you go from, uh, which is north of Turkey and south of, of Russia, for a, for a time, I believe it was a Turkish, they called it a Turkish lake during the Ottoman Empire days. And then the Russians actually, uh, Peter and the Russians expanded south. So now it's really, a, you say, a Russian and, uh, and a Turkish body of water. Down, of course, also, I think Bulgaria is there. And, uh, but, and then it has the great, the famous uh, Russian, uh, well, actually, that's Ukraine, which is independent now. This is why... Uh, yeah, and the Russians have gone into the eastern Ukraine partly because of the great Russian uh, vacation land was the uh, on on the Black Sea on, on the Crimea, which is uh, and, that's, and they were you know, they were like, oh wow we lost our vacation it's like losing Florida for Americans so yeah this Vladimir Putin he's occupied the Crimea so the Black Sea very interesting which is connected to uh, the Aegean Sea and the Mediterranean now an interesting thing is the Caspian Sea which is north of Iran surrounded by what's used to be the part partly Russia or the Soviet Union, and it's a uh, really a, a huge enclosed body of water. Must must be salty. That's why it's a sea. Pretty, really huge area. And then east of that, the Aral Sea, which is much smaller. And actually, the Aral Sea is disappearing. You know, it's, this, this is a very, I have right here, a very old atlas. The, the, the Aral Sea, I'm not sure why, if, if it's global warming or because they're using the water, but it's it's like down about, uh, and the Aral Sea is fairly big. The Aral Sea is uh, down about 70% of the water is gone. So that's that's really something. Now, if you're going, uh, okay, so this is in, uh, we're getting moving into, now look, moving back to Europe. Okay, now going into Africa, Africa doesn't have many bodies of water. It just has, uh, uh, it has Lake Victoria, which you can tell is the British influence. And, and like, they still have kept that name, I guess, because you, the countries around it, Uganda, Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania were former, I still, I guess they have a fence of, you know, they have a British legacy. So, Victor, uh, lake Victoria is the largest lake in, in Africa. And then there's Lake Chad, which is going up, getting close to the Sahara. And down south, Lake Tanganyika. So those are the yeah, bodies of water in, or the big lakes of Africa. Now, moving toward Asia in, uh, in Siberia, uh, Lake Baikal, the deepest lake in the world. Just imagine, pr pretty cold also. And then after, as we go east, the Sea of Akatsk. Isn't that, I like, that's an interesting, I like saying the Sea of Akatsk. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's uh, uh, you have the Kamchatka Peninsula to the east, and of course the Russia to the west, and Sakhalin Island. It's north of Japan. It must be real cold there. And uh, the Sea of Japan, which is uh, uh, west of Japan. And uh, let's see here. Oh, the Yellow Sea off the coast of China, then the East China Sea, and the South China Sea between the uh, China and the Southern China and the Philippines and Vietnam. And of course, China is now become, becoming wealthy and powerful, so they're throwing their weight around and they're acting like, oh, this is the South. There's been conflict with Filipino fishermen. They're, the Chinese are saying, ah, oh, this is our, all ours, the South China Sea, because, well, they have the power to do that. And then uh, we're going down into the. Uh, well, some of these other things, the Tasman Sea. Now, we haven't talked about the, the canals. The two, a canal is like a, 
well, a connecting body of water, man-made, the, 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 the Panama Canal, connecting the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean, built by the United States, the greatest, the biggest engineering job in history, tremendous amount of work. And now, so now you don't have to go around South America. You go, go through the Panama Canal. You don't have to deal with Cape Horn and uh, that, that horrendous trouble. And then the other is the Suez Canal, which was built, built by the French and not much, much, a much easier job, still a big job, between uh, co- connecting the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. And uh, so you don't have to go around Africa if you're traveling by ship between Europe and Asia. Now, we, we didn't mention the Red Sea, which is, uh, yeah, famous from, that's between, that's between Arabia and Africa. Famous because of the Bible when Moses led the enslaved Israelites, Israelites, who were enslaved in Egypt, back to freedom in Israel. When he had this miracle, great miracle of God, when they, you know, they, they were leaving and the, the Pharaoh changed his mind to decide, oh, we, want to get, we don't want to let these people go. And earlier he'd, he'd agreed when Moses said, let my people go. And then he said, he said no, what are we doing? We got to, these are our workers. We're not. So he tried to get them. And of course, according to the story, you've heard the story when they, the, the seas parted and the Israelites went through, went through this passageway and then made it. And then when the Egyptians came, the waters came and all these Egyptian soldiers drowned. So the Red Sea. And actually, there's been a lot of trouble in the Red Sea because of shipping oil tankers going between uh, Europe and, and, and Asia. And these Somali pirates who take over the ships and demand ransoms because Somalis sort of in, yeah, having severe political problems and there's chaos there. Now, the per- we haven't talked about the Persian Gulf. Well, now it's called the Gulf because it's, it's between Iran and Saudi Arabia. And the Saudis don't like it to be calling the Persian Gulf because Persia is the ancient name of Iran. Now they call it the Gulf. And uh, actually, an awful lot of uh, oil tankers from there uh, leave that because, you know, you have these Saudi Arabia and Qatar, you know, Bahrain and so forth, big oil producing countries. And a lot of uh, these oil tankers are leaving there with oil going around the world. Okay, so and then let's see this. Now we haven't talked about the straits. A strait is like when it's like a body of water between two land masses. And then you have some of these uh, straits, the Straits of Malacca between uh, between the Malay Peninsula and Sumatra. So if you wanted to go from, let's say, India to China by water, it would be faster to go through this strait instead of all the way around uh, Sumatra. And then, the, of course, the Bering Strait between Alaska and the U.S. and, and um, Russia, uh, which is this narrow bar area where, you can, where ships can pass between the Pacific into the Arctic Ocean if they want to do that. And uh, another, well, and there's the Strait of Hormuz between... Uh, which is between the per- the Gulf or the Persian Gulf and the Arabian Sea. Which uh, when the, when the Russians took Afghanistan in 1979, people thought, "Oh my God, what if they take Iran? They can cut off, the, and they can close the Straits of Hormuz, and then the, these oil tankers can't leave, and they'll they'll control a, a vast part of the world's oil oil wealth." Okay, so what have we forgotten here? I'm trying to think for a minute. You, oh, let's see the Hud the Hudson Bay in Canada, huge. Uh, Huge uh, body of water, and uh, it's connected to the Atlantic. Very, very cold. Yeah, Henry Hudson, who was probably just was traveling there uh, or exploring, he died there. And, you know, they, they used to have the old, the so-called Northwest Passage, when Europeans were hoping to go around uh, North America to the around America to the north to to travel to Asia. And so they kept trying and trying. And Hudson Bay is kind of on the way there, but it, it doesn't leave. And, act, and actually, eventually, the thing they learned is that there is. Uh, access. You can travel by water from the Atlantic to the Pacific uh, in northern Canada, but most of the year it's frozen, so it's not very practical. And so the Northwest Passage, yeah, it exists, but it's not commercially feasible to travel by water around northern Canada. And I haven't talked about the Great Lakes, where I'm, where I'm living here. We're just across the street. We have Lake Erie, the largest uh, freshwater body in the world, the Great Lakes. And what's wonderful is they are uh, freshwater, so we can we drink the water. That's most of the drinking water. Who p- people live around the Great Lakes. It's, it's a huge area, and it's apparently uh, uh, created during the Ice Age, when you know when the world was very, very cold, much colder than it is now. And this area here in uh, North America, what's now Ohio and uh, Pennsylvania and Michigan, and so forth, and in Ontario, Canada, there's a, apparently a mile high sheet of ice, a mile high, a lot of ice, and then it all melted. And it was moving, and it kind of carved a depression. And then when it melted, the, the water uh, filled this depression. Now we have all this, uh, this drinking water. So that's the, the Great Lakes. And then out west, you have the Great Salt Lake, where the, the Mormons uh, eventually settled in Utah, 
which is a pretty big lake, and it's all and it's salty. So uh, my father went there. My father was there when he's as a young man, and apparently it's saltier than the ocean. So you really really float. But if you get it in your eyes, it's it's tough apples, according to my father's college diary. So what have we forgotten here? Okay, so he varies. But oh, the Dead Sea. Now that's uh, Dead Sea is in the Middle East. It's by Israel and Jordan, I believe. I think it's the lowest body of water in the world. I think it's below sea level. Yeah, and the Dead Sea, apparently, I think it's because of salt or whatever. I'm not, Dead Sea, you mentioned there's no fish. That would be another good thing to learn about. Then the highest body of water in the world is Lake Titicaca in South America. Yeah, it's in the Andes Mountains. Apparently, this lake is way above sea level. There was a guy who took a tr- he decided, oh, I'll take a trip or a voyage. And between the dead, he started in the Dead Sea and made it to Lake Titicaca, Titicaca from the lowest uh, body of water to the highest. So anyway, what have we forgotten here? I'm sure there's other things. So it's a fascinating topic. Lake Tanganyika in Southern Africa. And uh, okay, so I think, I think we're about done. Oh, the, oh, the Caribbean Sea. Caribbean Sea, which is uh, between uh, South America and the and the U.S. and Central America. It has these, you know, it's, they have these Caribbean cruises and a wonderful history in the Caribbean because you have uh, the Spanish islands, Cuba, Puerto Rico, and, well, Dominican Republic, part of Hispaniola, and then French Sandman, now Haiti, and then um, the British islands, the Bahamas, Trinidad, and Jamaica. So, yeah, a lot of uh, history there, these th- European countries, and most of the people are descendants of African slaves because the, the Indians died on uh, the Gulf of Mexico where the Mississippi River flows into. Now, of course, there are many other smaller bodies of water we haven't talked about, like the Tasman Sea between Australia and New Zealand, the Coral Sea between Australia and Melanesia, a lot of fighting in the Second World War, and uh, let's see, can't see any, so that's, I think we're about out of, we're about out of, uh, we're about out of, out of, out of material here. So anyway, so it's a fascinating topic, you know, and like I said, if you get a world map, put it up in your home, a nice world map, and you can look at it for yourself, and it's so interesting to learn about these different, and it's a very helpful adjunct or companion, companion, companion information to the study of history, so you know where places are. So anyway, I, well, I wish you well in your study of history, if you're interested, and so much to learn, so many books to learn, and all these, um, God bless all the authors of amazing book, history books that have been written. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.